Andrew Cuomo came out of hiding. He's been gone for about six months. Um, and he is not accepting any of the stuff that went down at the end of his political career. Let me go ahead and share this Hill article with you guys, and we'll talk about it. Former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who resigned last year amid multiple accusations of workplace sexual misconduct, spoke out in public about his exit from office for the first time on Sunday and blamed the cancel culture mentality for his decision to leave. While delivering remarks at the God's Battalion of Prayer Church in Brooklyn, Cuomo acknowledged a difficult period the past few months. I resigned as governor. The press roasted me. My colleagues were ridiculed. My brother was fired. It was ugly. It was the first time that I was glad that my father wasn't here so he didn't have to see it said Cuomo. Addressing the congregation, Cuomo spoke about how politics has become so mean and so extreme, pointing a finger at his own political party. The former governor also directly addressed the allegations that were made against him by multiple female staffers and said the problem was that his behavior had not changed over 40 years despite a new sensitivity among younger generations. In his remarks, he also called cancel culture a new extremism. No one ever told me I made them feel uncomfortable, and I never sensed that I caused any discomfort to anyone. I was trying to do the opposite, but I understand that was my error, Cuomo said, adding that he accepted comments that he was old-fashioned and out of touch. So this is, again, he keeps doing a contradiction. Hey, man, I'm really sorry, but also this is just a, you know, cancel culture witch hunt. Do you have nothing to apologize, or do you have something to apologize for? It's a cancel culture witch, witch hunt, but also I'm really sorry, and I was out of touch. Now, by the way, this is his dodge. We've gone through all of the claims with a fine-tooth comb. You could go check out the original segment when we got the results of the report. Um, this idea that, look, I'm just Italian, and I'm handsy, and I'm old school, and this is how we did it, and I didn't mean anything by it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. for some of the claims, okay, you could say that's fair. But there were a number of claims that you can't just... Be like, well, you know, that's just how we used to do it. No, 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 no. I don't remember the specifics, but there were instances of straight up grabbing somebody's ass and shit. Um, having people switched in his inner circle to get closer to a woman that he's actively pursuing and touching in ways that cross a line. So, it's not like that excuse is not accurate. Because... He did do things that any reasonable person would say, that's not just old school, that's actually really creepy and gross and not okay. All right, now, but look, let's go a step further, because this is actually more important. He should have been out of the governorship in New York because of the decisions he made as governor. Totally separate and apart from the, the Me Too scandal stuff, the guy made a decision that sent COVID positive patients back into nursing homes and then led to, I don't even know how many deaths, countless deaths, COVID positive nursing home patients back into the nursing homes. And you think that's going to be okay. You think that's going to work out. That's not based on the science at all. He also tried to protect the nursing homes from any potential lawsuits, any liability stuff. You know, that is being totally corrupt and owned by industry over representing the people. And the list goes on and on. I mean, the guy, one of his top allies, went down on corruption charges. You know, one of his top staffers. He set up a commission to look into political corruption, and then the commission ended up having to look into him and his people, and then he disbanded the commission immediately as soon as they started looking into him. There was a scandal about him not using this, the right materials for a new bridge and trying to cover it up. I mean, that's that's dangerous. That could be dangerous stuff. The list goes on and on, man. And I haven't got, even got into, like, Chris Cuomo and CNN and their complicity. I mean, they were, they had Andrew Cuomo on and portrayed him like an absolute hero, like a star. At the same time, this guy was making horrendous decisions that were leading to the deaths of countless people. They were fluffing him up, boosting his ego, they, were at, they weren't asking real questions. They'd have him on to, to play patty cakes with him. And his brother eventually got fired because he was helping behind the scenes with the defense that Cuomo was playing over all these allegations. The head of CNN at the time, Jeff Zucker, was give, coaching Cuomo on how to do his like daily COVID 
press briefings. CNN was acting as a wing for the establishment Democrats and for the Cuomos particularly in New York. So this idea of like, it's just cancel culture. It's not, it's not cancel culture. You did things that were genuinely terrible, genuinely corrupt, led to the deaths of people, and this is called consequences for your actions. Now again, they ended up bringing him down over the Me Too stuff, but that's like getting Al Capone on tax evasion. You know, like it wasn't really the main thing that should have got you kicked out of office, but you stepped down, you got kicked out. So happy days at the end when all is said and done, you know, but God, it's so, this is the classic move now. Everything is cancel culture. Whatever I don't like is cancel culture. There can never be like a legitimate, genuine, sincere criticism that is fair and accurate. And there are consequences for that. No, it's, oh, it's all cancel culture. Oh, it's all triggered little snowflakes and the woke mob. And we're now seeing the, this excuse being used in the most ridiculous ways possible. I mean, we see this all the time now with the right. They'll say, oh, what are you, triggered? Are you canceling me? It's like, no, I'm not canceling you. I'm fact-checking you because you said something that is absolutely verifiably untrue. Oh, it must be the woke mobs coming after me. No, we're just saying, hey, man, you're wrong, and here are the specifics as to how you're wrong. And they don't, they don't have a real response to it. So anyway, Andrew Cuomo, man, a new extremism. You, no, you know what extremism is? Extremism is making decisions that lead to grandma dying. That's extremism. Go ahead, COVID positive patients, get back in there. And by the way, if you die, you're not gonna, the family's not going to be able to sue because I'm protecting the nursing homes. The list goes on and on. He was a charlatan. He was a con man. He was a fraud. He was found out. And now he's got no response. So all he does is, oh, it's cancel culture. By the way, he's, there was another line in the speech where he said, God's not done with me yet. Is he going to run for office again? Is he going to run for office again? He might. He might run for office again. Oh, man. I shudder at the thought that we have to deal with a lot of these terrible people and terrible politicians moving forward for like decades to come, whether it's Andrew Cuomo or Mayor Pete or whoever. I mean, this is, I just, I can't, I can't deal with these people. They're such frauds and it's so obvious. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.